Just have to watch it out. It's not very big bite. There you go. Fish on, fish on. There we go. What do we got? What's happening guys? Welcome back to the channel. Well, I'm out here on this beautiful, glorious day here. And I did a rare thing that I normally don't do. My kids are grown, they're all out of the house, up at college and whatever they're doing. And uh, I'm pretty much by myself there uh, at the house. But every once in a while, I decide to take a day off during the week. And why not? This is a perfect time to come out here and fish. All of the holidays are gone, all of the visitors are gone, and now pretty much we've got the Cape and Lope up here pretty much to myself. I'm looking up the way here, I got maybe 15 people down there, and I can just go up and down this pier. I literally have all day. Today we're gonna to try to come out for some fall flounder. I've never done this before on the pier whatsoever. Usually, again, I'm out here during the summer or on a boat if I get the chance to do so. So we're gonna go ahead and throw some baits on the end of the line, start casting around and work these pilings here, and hopefully, if we get lucky, guys, we get some of the brown beauties up on the end of the line. You know my mantra, I'm always going to showcase all of the local bait shops uh, that are around our area. I'm at my tried and true that I normally go to to get my bait needs for today. That's going to be my boy Steve and all of his great crew at Smith's Bait Shop in Lipsick, Delaware. All of his information is down below here if you choose to go to there. But I'm telling you right now, these guys got the best prices in town when it comes to live bait, especially when it comes to these mud minnows. I mean, I got a ton of them in here, so I can last all day with these as long as those batteries last and aerate them fish and keep them alive. So Steve, thank you very much, man. Hopefully we can get a couple fish on the end of the line with your minnows. Let's get to it. Let's get to work. Nope, oh, I think I already got a, did I get? Yep, I wrapped around. First cast, guys. <laughs> that wind took my cast uh, a little too far. There we go, we're out of there. But uh, we'll flip over here anyway, just uh, for the giggles. But I always uh, drop the line in here and I kind of let the line out a little bit so I got a little uh, area to travel in because I don't like the line kind of short and everything because I think it brings the bait up way too high. You want to kind of keep it just above the ground on the bottom of the water column there. Uh, that way it doesn't look too unnatural to uh, the uh, flounder there. But you kind of obviously want to make it as natural as possible. But it's going to be kind of hard to feel the bites out here. We got wind that's right in front of us here. I'd say maybe five, sometimes 10 mile an hour gusts. But uh, we'll figure the feel out here. And I always kind of walk back and see how my line is kind of almost parallel to the pier. That's usually what I do as I'm going along there because I want it as close to those pilings as I can. That's not to say the flounder aren't out there in front of us, but your better chances of catching a fish are right here. As we're going up the pier here, main thing you're looking for is uh, when you're looking at your rod here, and as well feeling it tactile wise, you're looking to see that the rod is kind of bowing just a little bit. Sometimes it feels like you're stuck, but maybe you're not because the fish could be just hanging on to that bait or you're actually gonna see bounces on the line here. So that's what you're kind of looking for uh, to try to decide whether you wanna strike or not. But there are snags up underneath here, so I gotta be careful. That's why I'm kind of taking my approach a little bit more uh, safely, I guess you could say, rather than trying to be aggressive. But somewhere along the line, there's going to be fish here. We're going to find them. We're making our way back to our stuff here, going the opposite direction on the pier. I took a look at the uh, Lewis Breakwater Harbor uh, tide chart there. It looks like low tide is going to be at 6.30. I think we're at slack right now. Uh, and uh, hopefully, very shortly, that'll start changing around and we're going to have that outgoing tide going on, which tends to be the better tide here on this pier, based on uh, folks that I talk to uh, throughout many times I come here. snag on something here. That's definitely not a bite. Ah, we got our first snag of the day. 
my battery died at the weirdest time but I had this bite as the camera dropped off and I think this is a stargazer I have no clue what the heck this ugly looking fish is so if you know what that is drop a comment below but I'm gonna look it up and see what type of stargazer that is I think that's what it is let's get our pliers in here and get this weird looking fish off of here but uh, that's definitely a, a new species here on 302 fishing but all she goes I did a quick Google search. There are many variations of the stargazer, but the one that we caught right there is a northern stargazer. So what a cool looking species. A brand new one, as I mentioned to you on the channel here. So let's keep going, guys. Let's get some more fish. Let's go ahead and uh, freshen up and get that bait back out there again. I was actually caught on that piling right there, and then when I broke free of the piling because I came backwards from where I was caught, that's when that northern uh, stargazer jumped up on that minnow. Seems like that wind died down, man. It was actually pretty blustery when I first got here, and I don't feel anything right now. I think it's because of that tide shift. I can literally see that the uh, water is now moving the opposite way. All I gotta do is watch the foam go out towards the ocean. Right where that tower is at, that's the Atlantic Ocean. If you can kind of get a feel as to where I'm at, if you've never been to Delaware before, all you do is look at an overhead map of Delaware, and a lot of people know the hook in Delaware, the shape of it. That is the hook that's right in front of us, right out there, there where that red lighthouse is at. That's actually a wall that's right here, but it actually ends at that point right behind uh, that lighthouse. Look at this freaky mess that's going on right here. That is nothing but sea lice that have absolutely inundated that minnow's body. That's crazy looking. <laughs> oh my God. All right, we're gonna have to get that guy off there, but uh, let's shake him off and uh, get that bait in the water because uh, he's about dead. Oh, he's still moving around, but I've never seen anything like that before. I have never seen that many sea lice on one fish, but uh, I have seen them before. Uh, they do tend to attach themselves to the black drum that you guys see us fishing uh, in the beginning of April, around mid-April, somewhere around that range. But uh, they're weird, unusual looking creatures that attach to some of these fish's bodies. We're still looking for that uh, next bite right here. One thing I didn't mention to you is you're using these Carolina rigs. Tide is kind of kind of dictate what kind of weight that you have on it. Right now, uh, things are not moving very much at all, but I have a, I think it's about a half ounce egg sinker that's on the end of there. You can go as much as one ounce out here, depending on the tide. Uh, usually when you're bombing out at the end of the pier, and you want a dead stick, you want to have a heavier bait. So, cause it's going to roll around a little bit, but you want enough weight so it can just sit right there as uh, the tide is moving the bait around on the leader and everything else like that. But if you see that water's moving at a pretty good clip, uh, obviously you want to increase the weight right here, but the lightest you can get away with, that's what you want to use right here. Cause the main thing you don't want to do is have that sinker bury too deep into the uh, sand below the water line here. We got fish jumping all over here. Looks like striper going off over here. Or no, actually, those are a mullet that are jumping up around here, I think. Or bunker, one or the other. But maybe you can see them if that, they're hopping around here. I saw them swirling over here when I was talking to this other couple. Let's gather up our things and move along. Let's see if uh, deeper waters bring us a better bite. Oh my God, <laughs> I was reeling it in man. This blue about this big attacks my bait. <laughs> that was crazy. Look what he did to the uh, body of the uh, minnow right there. You can see the big old teeth marks right there. <laughs> all right, I'm gonna take a rest for a couple seconds here. Uh, the tide again, as I said, is not really moving at all. And I've been going up and down here and not getting any kind of bites other than that one blue that smashed up on my bait right there. Again, real small. But I'm just gonna flip out my bait, let it sit right there, right next to the structure, and see if anything bites until this turn of tide comes around.
It's like something's trying to straighten my line out over here. Definitely got a bite on the end here. Something's on there. Just have to watch it out. It's not a very big bite. There you go. Fish on, fish on. There we go. What do we got? Nice, we got a good flounder, guys. Nice flounder. <laughs> there we go. Told you they'd be out of the structure. <laughs> All right, good deal. He might be. He's close. He's close. Yeah, he's a little. Yeah, he's a little under, but he's a nice flounder. I think about 14. Yep. Yeah. All right, let the spugger calm down. Uh, minnows. Just a minnow? Yeah, that's it, man. All right. I man. took my uh, break and sat down here and just tossed right by the structure and let it sit there. Oh, yeah. <laughs> All right, man. So we got our first flounder of the day on. I knew it was a matter of time. Just got to find my pliers. Here we go. Got to get it right around the bend of that hook there so it comes out properly. There we go. Got our flounder free. Woo, that was a big jump. But we'll get that over here. We've got a quick measurement off it. Calm him down. All right, I measured out the uh, flounder right here. That's almost a legal size flounder. That's 15 and three quarter inch. There's a sea lice that's on this guy here. They're all over the place in the water here. But we're gonna go ahead and take this flounder. We're gonna release it on the other side so we're not catching the same exact fish over, over again. But I'm happy we got the target fish on the end of the line. But let's go ahead and give uh, that uh, flounder a nice little send off. And off she goes. So what I was doing there is, I'm not sitting out here in the bright sunny areas. You can see it's shaded over here. I told you the tide is gonna be outgoing. So the fish are gonna be hanging right behind these pilings here, right in that eddy that's there, because everything's starting to flow just a little bit right now. And right when I throw over there, where that uh, pipe is popping out over here, that's where that flounder was at. So we're gonna pop over there again and see if there's another one over there. But I was watching a Rod tip flutter like that, and all of a sudden it started going down. So, I'm like, oh, we got something good. All uh, right, we're gonna head down here and see what the, this gentleman got on the end of his line. Is that a sheep's head? I believe it is. What is that? Hold on. So about two weeks ago, about over here, right where that light pole's at, somebody caught that five pound sheep's head you guys saw right there. A lot of people commonly mistake what we're getting ready to see right now, which is a black drum that he just dropped and almost knocked him unconscious. But we're gonna go ahead and get this fish from him real quick. What's your name? Nice. My name is Henry, but I didn't Henry, catch it. Henry, who caught that? Yeah. I did. What'd you get it on? Uh, sand fleas. All right, so sand fleas. So the difference you can tell right here is on the mouth right here. So if you've ever caught a croaker before, it's kind of almost in the same species. That's what the mouth looks like. Yeah. Or a big, big uh, black drum. But uh, this is kind of like the juvenile of that, the black drum. But pretty cool catch, man. Nice job. Thank you. <laughs> but uh, he stinks too, boy. But uh, every once in a while, you can hear him croak like the croakers. But again, another rare catch off of here. Weird species throughout this year, man. So I'm absolutely thrilled on that. Look at the gold colors on the beautiful. dorsal right there. Absolute beautiful fish. Yeah. Is that legal? He's right at 16. All right, man. I, I, All you gotta do is work about shrinkage, man. I, 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 don't, I, don't, I don't want him. What do you guys want to do? Put him back in the water? Hey, do you want this black drum? He's right at 16. All right. He's right at 16. I would worry about shrinkage, man, if I were you. You got uh, those guys that are down there, man, because they'll be here. There throw, you go. Throw it in. All right. So here's what I would tell you the rule of thumb is 16 inches or whatever your measurement is on especially these other species besides croaker and they, they, they lose spot. A, they lose a half inch. Exactly. Though. When you put them in the ice, they shrink. So if it's right at 16, right put at 16. them right back in the water, it's guys. Actually right at 16. <laughs> yeah, so we're going to go ahead and uh, give him. Oh, he's going to give me the honors. You got it. All right, so excellent, excellent catch. I want to get a picture of oh. Too late. <laughs> <laughs> but uh, what I can do is I can get a still for you. And I can send it to you through your uh, text messages if you want to do that. No, that's okay. But uh, fist good. bump, man, that's a great catch. Thanks. Awesome. Thanks. And All thanks right. for uh, helping out right there. Thanks for the assist, too. Oh, uh, yeah, I'm, <laughs> I'm here for you. All right, man, what a cool catch. Well, that day didn't turn out well for me. I thought with all the time in the world, I had eight hours to sit on that pier, I was going to get a whole bunch of fish on the end of the line, and it just did not happen. The fish gods were not cooperating with me. I mean, granted, I got two fish on the end of the line. We got a cool new species. We got that Northern Stargazer, and of course that great catch right off the of structure as the tide was just about to change, but boom, 
flat dead right after that. And we got that one fortunate uh, gentleman who had that black drum at the end of the pier to kind of balance the video out right there. So I was fortunate enough to go ahead and have the day off, enjoy the weather. And again, like I said, have a couple catches to hear there. But uh, you can't get uh, everything that you want on every video that you uh, fish on, guys. I mean, you always think you're gonna get the giants. You always think you're gonna get 30 million fish on the end of the line, but sometimes it don't work that way. That's what happened right there. Uh, before I close this out here, uh, I am in the next or possibly the next one after that, I'm gonna go ahead and try to update you on some health issues that might affect my mobility and potentially affect uploads here on this channel right here. It's not something that I'm looking forward to. I noticed that it happened maybe a few weeks ago and I went to the doctors and actually went to the emergency room and saw something that was uh, quite concerning to me and possibly my health. And I wanna make sure that when I go to these doctors, I get this thing taken care of correctly. I won't get into the details, but once I get into that next video or so, I will let you know exactly what's happening right there so you guys can kinda of, you know, keep an eye on what's going on with the channel and everything else. We're not gonna disappear. I'm gonna do my best to get out there and fish regardless. You know me, guys, I'm hardcore, man. I, I wanna put fish up in front of you, but again, health is paramount. So you gotta think about that first. And then, of course, you guys are next. So I'm hoping you guys liked that video. If you did, give me a big fat thumbs up. If you haven't already subscribed, hit that subscribe button. Click that notification bell that we inform to all of our future episodes. You can follow me on Instagram at 302fishing. Drop a comment below. Let me know what you think about this uh, video right here. And I'm hoping you guys had a great weekend and I hope to get to see you next weekend.